Uh, Assalamu alaikum, uh, ladies and gentlemen, audience from different parts of the country and the world, and this team the speaker. Good afternoon from Bangladesh. So here we are today at the most awaited event of the year, World Business Angel Investors Week, and I am honored to host this program in Bangladesh. So this is Asif Iqbal, I'm the Senior Lecturer of the Department of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, and also the Global Mentor for a Startup of World Business Angel Investment Forum. I would like to welcome you all to this grand event. So World Business Angel Investors Week uh, creates a unique opportunity to showcase fresh and innovative ideas that inspire current and future leaders of the world to take risk on new ideas, collaborate across sectors, and transform world economies through the scaling of entrepreneurship, angel investment, financial inclusion, and innovation. So in this session, we will hear and learn different aspects of entrepreneurship ecosystem of Bangladesh and the angel investment ecosystem of Bangladesh as a whole from our distinguished keynote speaker. So let's welcome our keynote speakers of today's session. We are honored to have Professor Shibli Rubayatul Islam, who is the chairman of Bangladesh Securities Exchange Commission. And also we are, uh, we are having Dr. Mohamed Sarur Khan, chairman of Daffodil Family and uh, Daffodil International University as the keynote speaker. We also have Mr. Mohamed Nur Jaman, group CEO of Daffodil Family, and he is the country chair of World Business Angel Investor Sweep with Bangladesh. So let, welcome, sir, to our, our session. So I would like to request you first, uh, Mr. Mohan Nur Jaman sir, to share, his, uh, share some thoughts behind World Business Angel Investors Week and its different initiatives and activities throughout this week. Thank you so much, Asif. Uh, respected uh, Chief Guest and keynote speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Shibli Rubaitskam sir, distinguished speaker, Dr. Uh, Mohan Sabur Khan sir, uh, dear viewers, viewers from around the globe. I welcome you all uh, in today's World Business Angel Investment uh, Week, Bangladesh event. You all know that the World Business Angel Investment Forum, uh, in short, WBF, is an affiliated partner of G20 Global Partnerships for Financial Inclusion. So what most influential uh, association. As an affiliated uh, partner of GPFI, WBF is committed to uh, collaborating globally to empower the economic development of the world by fostering innovative financial instruments for startups, scale-ups, you know, innovators, enterprises and small and medium enterprises, and to promoting gender equality and women's participation in all sectors of the world. It's our immense pleasure to let you know that WBF has been informed in the, uh, has been formed WBA Bangladesh has been formed in 19, uh, 2018 under the leadership of our, of our chairman, Dr. Sabur Khan, founder and chairman of Daffodil International University and Daffodil Family. Since then, we have been working to popularize the angel investment as well as to promote the same in line with the government rules and policies in the field of startup ecosystem. WBF Bangladesh invites you to join our global efforts to ease access to finance, promote financial inclusion, and create more jobs and social justice. The Today's Angel Investment Week is one of the initiatives support the vision and mission of our country, as well as to go with the same pace of global initiatives for connecting our youths who aspire to be the entrepreneurs and to create employment uh, for the youths as well. Let's hope for the best and wish all of you good luck. Thank you so much. Salam. So what, Asif? So thank you so much, sir. So, 
thank you for for sharing your thought on behind WBAW or World Business Angel Investors Week in Bangladesh. Uh, so, as you know, this uh, this program, this flagship program of World Business Angel Investors Week, uh, is a program of World Business Angel Investor Investment Forum, and the man behind it is Mr. Babar Saltuntas, who is the executive chairman of WBF. So he shared a video message with us. Let me play that video so that you can you can uh, know a bit more about uh, WBAW. After that, we'll go back to our keynote speaker for the session. Dear presidents, dear prime ministers, dear ministers, continental chairs, country chairs, and dear participants. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic, business transformation was a concern of big companies. But now it is imperative and not just for large enterprises. Even the smallest companies and organizations must transform their business as a matter of urgency in order to cope with dynamics of the post-pandemic business environment. Surveys reveal that most small companies and entrepreneurs in the startup economy are suffering financially. Their plight will become even more serious if they have not been able to complete their business transformation before the new normal sets in. The challenge is this. Business transformation is not a cheap process. How realistic is it to encourage entrepreneurs to invest in business transformation when they are struggling just to meet their short-term expenses? Given this situation, as an affiliated partner of the G20 Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion, the World Business Angels Investment Forum invites policymakers to develop smart policies that will provide financial support for startups, scale-ups, SMEs, and all entrepreneurs to help them transform their business. WBAF believes that more public-private partnerships should be mobilized for this purpose, and governmental recovery plans need to include financial support for entrepreneurs' business transformation efforts. Governments must be alerted to the fact that unless small companies receive financial support for transforming their business, they will not be able to survive in post-pandemic times. This means their capacity to create more jobs and social wealth for economies will be lost. I would like to thank in advance all the stakeholders and partners who will be contributing to World Business Angel Investors Week 2022. They will be highlighting the importance of business transformation for post-pandemic times, the topic of this year's event. I believe to grow and thrive in a post-pandemic world, swift business transformation into a pandemic-proof organizational model is vital. If we are to ensure the sustainability of world economies in the new normal. I would like to thank the organizing committee and colleagues who will be taking roles as continental chairs, country chairs, global partners, keynote speakers, and panel discussants. Their combined efforts will create value for the world startup economies, not only during this week, but in the future as well. They will focus on harnessing the collective knowledge of the world's most influential women leaders, policymakers, entrepreneurs and artists with a view to addressing critical issues of early stage equity markets in the new normal. This week will be a great platform from which to campaign for solutions to such critical issues and other worldwide concerns at the United Nations, the European Union, and in G20 countries and regional and local economies. World Business Angel Investors Week 2022 is celebrated in 132 countries of five continents and two regions, with more than 200,000 participants from around the world, 320 keynote speakers, 765 distinguished panel speakers, addresses of 12 presidents, six prime ministers, 32 ministers. This is really great. And it is a great pleasure for the World Business Angels Investment Forum to coordinate this particular event of the world globally. 
the ultimate goal of all of the week's keynotes, discussions, presentations, and workshops is to agree on a common roadmap for entrepreneurs, startups, and SMEs that will enable them to emerge from this pandemic period even stronger than they were before. I have good news, by the way. The next World Congress of Angel Investors will be in person on 25 and 26 of October in Antalya of Turkey. This will be the first global convergence of world investors, public funds, startups, angel investors, wealth management institutions after Mr. COVID started traveling around the world. So I am very excited to see all of you in person next October in Antalya. And our Congress topic will be digital transformation for post-pandemic economies. We will discuss this week business transformation and we will discuss digital transformation next October in Turkey. And we will collect all our collective knowledge and Thrive will go on thriving to empower the world economy through innovation, entrepreneurship, and angel investment. I'm confident that each participant in the World Business Angel Investors Week will benefit from the collaborative ideas, know-how exchange, training programs, and workshops, and global networking opportunities that are offered. I believe that by working together across borders with a common vision and smart dynamics in mind, we are well placed to bring about positive change in the global economy. Thank you very much for joining our global efforts to ease access to finance for entrepreneurs, promote gender equality, increase financial inclusion, and promote the importance of digital inclusion for post-pandemic times. Thank you. <clears throat> so thank you, Mr. Babers, uh, for for sharing the sharing your part behind WBAW within the uh, video masses. So thank you so much, and I hope our audience has got an uh, idea of the the masses of business transformation and World Business Angel Investors Week. And he also mentioned that in, in, in October, they are going to host the World Business Angel Investment Forum Congress, which will be held in Turkey. Uh, so now it is time to uh, listen our uh, distinguished uh, keynote speakers. So first of all, I would like to request, uh, we, are going to, we are going to listen to the fact of angel investment, uh, shaping future of finance for entrepreneurs. On this topic, I would like to request our favorite Professor Shibli Rubayatul Islam, Chairman of Bangladesh Securities and Exchange Commission, to share his valuable thought behind this uh, idea. Sir, over to you, and we are eagerly waiting to uh, listen to you. Thank you very much, Asif. Thank you so much. Uh, at first, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me today. I'm feeling really honored and privileged, and uh, especially because of... Uh, the very important topic that you have raised today on angel investment. I remember a few years back when uh, Soburbhai was uh, organizing these things uh, at the Fudil University, and uh, he is a keen, uh, I mean, sponsor of this event. So I'd like to make a presentation that is on shaping future of finance for entrepreneurs. But my presentation will be uh, mainly based on Bangladesh economy with a little focus on uh, external economy. So I, I feel, uh, I think there are some international uh, guests here today. So I'll be speaking in English, if you kindly permit. So angel investment shaping, shaping the future of finance for entrepreneurs. There are a few buzzwords that uh, we generally hear. Oops. So these are the buzzwords that you usually hear, like idea generating, innovation, entrepreneurship development, networking as a very uh, strong tool nowadays. 
we also talk about startup scale scalability this type of buzzwords we are hearing regularly nowadays angel investment among all is also one of the very important areas that we need to talk about angel investors are very qualified uh, innovative uh, generally yachts having lot of ideas and uh, they need a little bit of push especially because they need some money to make their dreams come true for that they need uh, initially some someone an angel who will come forward to help him or her with pre seed capital and some seed capital so that the innovator can entry a strat as a strat strategy for uh, implementing what he wants to do or he wants to innovate the idea that is uh, running behind his brain but cannot materialize just because of some money but if it proves that this is financially viable it's good it can generate some revenue it's uh, good for the society good for the world then it moves forward from series a series b series c which is as per financial terms we say early stage later stage and then the venture capital private equity merger acquisition and strategic investments when that comes but prior to that we need someone to help this young innovative quality entrepreneur who wants to be an employer then employee but just because of little bit of seed money he stuck later on after successful implementation and revenue generation that can be sold to a venture capital can be uh, ipo issued merger with an equity swap or family succession liquidation whatever they want to do that is the exit plan but for initiation we need some angels in order to uh, initiate this angel investment a uh, buzzword in our economy people like mr sabur khan can play a good role because we have a big dream of bangladesh the country is doing good in every corner of uh, the country and uh, you can see the gdp growth inflation rate investment to gdp per capita income reduction of poverty everything is uh, showing all the positive indicators that an economist or an investor wants to see about bangladesh bangladesh has some socio economic advantages like demographic advantage when 63% of our population is under 30 the median age is 27.6 years this is an energy for a country our education institution the number of education institution from private and public both are increasing the number of students are increasing now we need some uh, diploma some uh, vocational uh, training this type of institution around the country the literacy rate is very interesting that during the independence war when it was only 20% now it's more than 75% the innovation capability of our youths are really very very encouraging when i was the dean of the business school between 2012 to 2020 of dhaka university i originated i tried to make some uh, innovation workshop and you will be very happy to know that applicants were huge 200 300 applicants with their own innovative ideas but what happened we chose 20 for financial assistance and you will be very happy to know that 12 of them are doing now very well eight of them they collapsed but that is the normal situation for startups that few of them will fail and many of them will succeed and even if few of them succeed that will contribute huge over the economy will re generate huge revenue and also help in employment generation of the country the startups of bangladesh uh, during the covid-19 uh, this nascent ecosystem was seriously affected the country was suffering the business people were suffering the households were suffering so it was difficult for startups to get some funding from uh, different different corners but it was when it was 2020 before the 
COVID started, it was quite interestingly growing and uh, we were so happy that young people are coming up with so many ideas. But 2020 made a serious blow and 24% of startups had to close down. 32% startup witnessed a 50% decrease in business and $54 million revenue lost by the startups, which is actually too much for them. But as you know that our Honorable Prime Minister was very intelligent in handling the country. So she made a very uh, balanced decision between life and livelihood. And that's why the economy of Bangladesh was running and uh, everything was uh, moving. And our uh, agricultural output, our industries, just with a little bit of bump, they immediately uh, jumped into the normal flow of the growth. So thank you, Honorable Prime Minister, for helping us. And thank you for uh, keeping the economy moving. The startup ecosystem of Bangladesh, if you compare with the regional peers, you'll be upset. Because people like Sobur Khan are very few in Bangladesh. And uh, we need many of uh, so Mr. Sobur Khan type people here to help the startups. But the interesting thing is now government as I'm involved with the finance ministry. So I can see the finance ministry is also taking now initiative. The Startup Bangladesh, the organization is also very keen. They got international financing now. Our uh, advisor to the Honorable Prime Minister, Principal Secretary to the Prime Minister, Bangladesh Bank Governor, our Honorable Finance Secretary, we all sat together uh, a month or two back at BIDA to help startups in Bangladesh. So policy related issues, that will help the startups in Bangladesh are also underway and government is very keen. We clearly pointed out the issues relating to uh, the barriers that is not helping the startups and where angel investors cannot come. So NDR, Bangladesh Bank, Ministry, everyone is now well aware of the situation and they're trying to help this startup situation so that uh, Bangladesh can do better and the yachts of Bangladesh get encouraged. So. This slide will uh, discourage you, but I, I assure you that the initiatives taken by the government of Bangladesh will encourage you in the coming days. Startup culture in Bangladesh, if we divide it, Angel Investor Syndicate, you can see the names that we have here. They're already trying to improve the situation. The Bangladesh Angel Network, first angel investing platform in the country, Omen Investors Network, a sister chapter of BAN, accelerators and incubators are also there, GP Accelerators 3.0, R Venture 2.0, this is uh, also supported by Roby, Bangla Link, IT Incubator. So these are all the uh, startup culture that is developing even over the corporate sector. The financing situation uh, was not very good. If you see the uh, curve and the details here, if you see to 2010, 2011, 12, very discouraging. But from 2018 onwards, before the COVID, it was 40 million. But 2021 is 415 million. And this 2022, not the whole year finished. So far, we have received 25 million. But we hope that this flow, this growth will definitely improve and uh, the situation will improve because now the government is very keen. I represent the government. I know we are very keen to help the startups and angel investors. The financing scenario is here. If you see the scenario that uh, venture capitals are actually mainly taking the major role and uh, there are a little bit of grants. And sector-wise, if you see that people are more keen on uh, healthcare now because of the COVID situation, and also in logistic and mobility, and uh, you'll find someone in food and agriculture-related issues also. In Bangladesh Securities and Exchange Commission also, we are encouraging small and medium enterprises to get enrolled here. And the first e-commerce uh, company we have already allowed in IPO and they are doing very well. We are also planning to uh, help new SMEs to come and join our SME board, like uh, who are on e-commerce business, so that they get financed and not struggling 
because that is uh, e-commerce is the future of Bangladesh and e-commerce will be contributing large in our uh, revenue generation in future. And these are already proven uh, successful startups where angel investment helped. And that's how these Bangladeshi companies are now doing very well and very internationally recognized and international investments are already there. The right investment by angel investors, finding the right place for them is a little bit critical. Quality of the founder and their focus is a key major issue for them. The unit economies and tech enabling scaling is also an issue. But the market size and its potential is quite high, but it depends on the type of business they want to do. The exit strategy, they are not happy. Some of them came and saw me, met me, and they told their exit strategy related issues and the hurdles they face. And immediately we waived them and immediately we helped them in getting rid of those so that few startup and angel investors who are after two years, three years, they want to leave and want to do something new. We help them in getting uh, in getting an exit and invest in a new venture. So this is already happening, and we are already in contact with the investors, and they also want to value their investment, comparing this with the other countries of the world. There are some challenges to the angel investment in Bangladesh. The one is lack of networking, lack of available and trustworthy documentation. Avoidance of being risk taker that some people don't want to take chance. Weak convincing power and startups. This is a communication skill that we lack in every corner of Bangladesh. And lack, lack of updated technical skill. This technical skill is a missing uh, thing that is in Bangladesh. And this technical skill, technical knowledge, technical uh, universities, vocational training, vocational univers universities, labs, these are all the missing areas where entrepreneurs like Sobur Khan should put an eye into. From the local founders, through their own eyes, how do they look at angel investment? They think that angels are taking more than around 20% of the company. They look for dividends, which is generally not a very good thing to do. They want to take control of the board and the management and the strategies. They want short-term metrics. They want quick break-even and profit. They want uh, uh, something which do not help in adding value to the company initially, which is actually required because valuation is very important at the initial years. And they actually look into the physical assets more than the tangible assets. So these are the issues that the angel investors are finding. But why this angel investment is so important to Bangladesh? Angel in investment contribution via time and expertise, knowledge and connection to the business is very much. Bangladesh is now relying on this foundation of economy. When we talk about an economic foundation, you have to take care of first the micro, cottage, ma macro, small and medium industries. So that's where you need to do this. The empirical strong correlation between national GDP and the number of entrepreneurs are also very important where we lack. And angel investors with the parents of SMEs providing more than money in return for a stake in startup success is also an issue. Why you will select Bangladesh as an angel investor? There are a few reasons for that. Bangladesh is one of the top uh, country having a sustainable economic growth for more than a decade and is growing and growing. The growth rate is improving. We have a very young, skilled young force, very uh, technological uh, knowledge. They have very well and they're quick learners. The competitive lever cost is low in Bangladesh, lower debt to GDP ratio, even if you compare to the modern world, developed world and very stable political environment for more than a decade. And especially we have now energy solution. There is abundant electricity supply and we have gas solution through LNG and local gas supply coming up and it own 170 million uh, market having a growing purchasing power. 
So this is our own market also, size of England, France, Italy together, or half of United States of America. The regulatory framework of uh, Bangladesh, as I said earlier, through government of Bangladesh, Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, Bangladesh Bank, they're all now keen to have startups move faster. And they are implementing rules, regulations, helping them. Any barrier hurdles, they are trying to waive those. And in the last budget, if you see, especially there are Startup Bangladesh Limited and ICT Division, they are for, formated a capital of 500 crore. And the proposed budget, if you see that they have allowed to carry forward losses over a period of nine years because startups, they usually incur losses. So these are the things where they have problem. Government has put those all in the budget of 2022-23. The government has also reduced the rate of turnover tax from 0.1% uh, to 0.6% uh, uh, to 0.1% for the next fiscal year. So this is going to help the startups because they will initially incur loss before they uh, come to a profit. The rocket ship forward of angel investment in Bangladesh, promising economic stance of the country with so far for $100 million coming. And we are expecting more to come and already 1.5 million jobs created. Liberalized economic reform by government, you can easily see in the recent budget. And hassle-free capital repatriation facilities made by Bangladesh Bank. We have made all the rules related regulations regarding venture capital startups at Bangladesh Securities and Exchange Commission. We are issuing licenses for new startups, new venture capitals very fast in a fast track basis and shifting of existing collateral based financing to cash flow based financing. That is where there was a big hurdle and that is already removed. So as we say in the road shows around the world, those days of saying Bangladesh having a lot of issues and uh, misrepresenting uh, Bangladesh around the world, age old perceptions, those days are gone. This is a new Bangladesh, a changing Bangladesh. The budget is made in Bangladesh. The country is now having uh, shifting from the gear from the second, third, fourth gear. Now from necessities and basics to engineering and uh, high uh, engineering products and uh, we are moving from uh, normal garment export to now engineering products and motor vehicle production in bangladesh so these are the shifting area and uh, here we need a lot of backward linkage industries and a lot of innovative ideas so this is the time to reap the investment opportunities in Bangladesh before it's late. And thank you very much for organizers for arranging such a time worthy discussion, which will definitely help Bangladesh. Thank you very much. Feeling honored and privileged. Bye. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. It was so inspiring, and we have Most we have welcome. we have got a great insight of the whole ecosystem as a whole. And those who are angel investors, those who are startups and entrepreneurs, you have seen a great, uh, great, uh, great things are coming uh, towards you. And in, I hope uh, it will be very encouraging all of the startups and entrepreneurs of the country. And now. Uh, Again, we are moving towards to another another keynote speaker uh, on a, another very important topic that is innovative techniques to maximize the startup potential, uh, which is, uh, I guess, the biggest aspect of many entrepreneurs. So for this, I would like to request Dr. Mohamed Sobur Khan, Chairman of Daffodil Family and Daffodil International University. And I would like to mention he is also the High Commissioner of World Business Angel Investment Forum in Bangladesh. So we're waiting to share, uh, we know your valuable thoughts on this yeah. issue. So I'll discuss um, on a few of the points about his uh, presentation. And, and thank you, uh, Professor Shibirubai, sir. And thank you for your lot of good point and indication and some of the index and some of the statistics you already uh, presented in front of us. I'm sure that an international investor and especially those who are working World Business Angel Forum, because it is a huge networking, more than 170 countries 
working under the leadership of the viewers Altul Das. I think you already gave me one uh, uh, just a message to us. So I hope that a few of the point and few of the indication as you already mentioned, right? If I'm in the funding stage, and you already giving the lot of emphasis to the venture capital company and alternative for fund management, these sorts of private equity. And recently, I think that's uh, you also allowed the small capital investment in the uh, Security Exchange Commission, especially the Dhaka Stock Exchange and Chitong Stock Exchange. So a lot of this reformation is also going on. So these sorts of, I'm sure that the indication, and especially the government is also took a lot of initiative. As you already mentioned, the Startup Bangladesh and some other funding agencies is also working very closely with that government. And at the same time, you rightly pointed out the young people, those who are coming as a startup, they should be innovative, they should be quality. Because a lot of cases you already mentioned that they cannot able to attract or get the con bring the confidence of the trust because trust orthiness is one of the key factors, especially the young startup. In a lot of cases, they are uh, keeping their idea or bringing their idea, but suddenly they thought that overnight they will become the millionaire. That should not be possible. But again, that is also possible if it is uh, click in the right way, in the right format. So that is why I should say the Bangladesh venture capital company and angel investor and usually this lot of lot of cases I see the lot of the lot of the stakeholder is now they are working together. They form a lot of this uh, initiative. And I must say that the, if I'm not wrong, we are the second Bangladesh uh, initiator of the venture capital company. So our venture capital company is also working very hard to find out the right initiative or uh, right startup. And at the same time, I hope that you will be happy to know the Daffodi International University, the first time in the country, we develop a three crore taka fund, which is called Entrepreneurship Development Fund. It's called the EDF fund. So this EDF fund is 100% interest-free and 100% no hidden charge, nothing, no service charge. So we just created this three crore taka fund for our, you know, our, our students, those who are interested to become the startup or become the businessman. And at the same time, today, when I'm sitting here, because now I'm in the campus, so when I'm sitting here, and you'll be happy to know that one of the, uh, we call the Oiti Jerhat, that is one of the exhibition is going on from the 64th district. Because Bangladesh is a very geographical location, is very promising location. So 64 district, we have 64 culture, 64 heritage, 64 kinds of product, and 64 kinds of opportunity also. If I'm telling that Bandurban, Khagrachuri, I think these people are I'm also surprised to see their stall because they already bring their, all of their heritage, all of their good product from their own community. So this is the one of the opportunity which also we are trying to culture. We are trying to nurture them also to bring their product and demonstrate that. And it is also very surprised when one o'clock I visited their stall. I think 90% product is there, they sold it. So that is a, one of the surprising uh, factor for me that the student of this university, they have the commercial ability. I think as a, as a consumer, they are also very nice because every stall they already express uh, sir, we have never thought that everything will be sold so uh, so quickly. So this is also a very good indication. I'm sure that uh, the students are also helping each other, those who have the entrepreneurial mind. So I'm sure that, uh, as you already mentioned, the dream of Bangladesh, and I'll be, I, I'm completely agree with you, the Bangladesh startup ecosystem is already government looks after very serious thing as the Security Access Commission. You are also fighting and you also give the emphasis to the, and giving a lot of the policy to the, uh, angel investor company and those who are working also very closely with this this sorts of effort. So definitely the alternative investment and other opportunities which you already mentioned in your presentation. Uh, I, I, I hope that our World Business Angel Forum, some of the practices they are also showing and maybe Nurul Jaman as a chair of this country, chair of the World Business Angel Forum week. So I hope that I will request Asif and Jaman to bring the all 170 countries the best of best practices and to try to find out that which can be possible to implement in our country. Because as uh, we are, again, we told as a demographic dividend, I think which also Professor uh, Shibli Robais already mentioned that it is also a very good advantage because our people are young. And the mindset is also changing. This is the one of the plus point that our student mindset earlier, they were very much uh, just uh, confident to enter in the job market. So now I think there's a majority of the student, I think somehow they are also thinking or expecting that to become entrepreneur. This is, I should say, a, a tremendous change mentality is coming from every sector, but even in the grassroots level. Also, we are seeing the positive minded, the people are very curious to come to the, the entrepreneur. So I should, uh, I'll request to both of you that please bring all of the 170 countries practices and example and which can be possible. And then I'm sure that 
maybe you can organize that one of the presentation session maybe online maybe offline maybe you can some other format or maybe you can publish it or you can send it to the information to the all of the relevant authority those who are working for developing the startup ecosystem in our country so thank you thank you again professor shivri rubai sir for your wonderful participation and uh, presentation and all of the point i hope that uh, uh, jaman and his team will consider all of the point and will bring it in the uh, and present it in the wbf main forum thank you and we shall thank you very much, much. Uh, thank you so much, sir. We will we will uh, do it, and uh, I hope uh, it will, it is also very important. Uh, important some of the important points you bring bring on board, and uh, as you know, uh, the mindset is very important. Uh, we when we started, as I'm I'm on the faculty of Department of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, we used to face the problem of having the right mind minded people who wants to become an entrepreneur. But now we have, uh, as Shibli sir mentioned, that we are now a change to Bangladesh. So. i think a lot of good minded people those who wants to become an entrepreneur so thank you so much so uh, this concludes the first session of world business angel investor suite and after this we will have another panel discussion on on an angel investment in bangladesh so for this i hope uh, our, our our dear audience will be with us for the panel discussion and thank you so so much all the audience who will be listening us who actually with us for the whole session and thanks to our esteemed speakers who have shared their valuable speeches and uh, given our your valuable time with us so thank you so much sir and thank you so much everyone so ladies and gentlemen uh, audience from different part of the country and the world and our esteemed panelists good afternoon from bangladesh so here we are today at the most awaited event of world in uh, business angel investors week and i am honored to host this panel as the moderator i am asip ikbal senior lecturer of department of innovation and entrepreneurship and also the global mentor for the startup of world business angel investor work forum to welcome to this panel so this panel is all about entrepreneurs financial journey and angel investment so we will hear and learn different aspect from our distinguished panelists about this So first of all let's welcome to our panelists for today's program we are honored to have Munir Hasan sir chief coordinator of digital transformation and youth program prathom alo Nijhar Rahman CEO of Bangladesh Angel AKM Five Mashur uh, co-founder and chief executive officer of Biri Jobs and also Mr Asif Asif Rahman founder of Aircom and WP Developers he is also the serial uh, serial entrepreneur and angel investor as well so first of all without any delay as we have a very short time so without any delay so i'd like to welcome first munir hasan sir to share a bit about you your different activities and also how we actually we have seen uh, i mean many startups are getting funded so how the new ideators or innovators could take inspiration from this and prepare themselves for this so sir Ah, thank you, Asif. Uh, thank you for this uh, initiative. And I, I apologize because I have some other uh, appointments, so I have to leave early. Uh, so the most important part is that it, what actually we are doing. Uh, from Kothomalo, Kothomalo is a news media. This is the largest media house of the country. So for the young entrepreneur and and the entrepreneur ecosystem startup ecosystem we actually support the entrepreneurs we we regularly portrait them highlighted them any achievement even they get uh, we are now regularly actually feature if someone get uh, funded so that the other uh, uh, in other uh, startup uh, entrepreneurs could get excited to know about that and the detail about that one so this is one part from my uh, media house Besides, I also as a volunteer actively uh, working with the startup editor, and I found that the most important part that our startups are missing is the idea of what funding is, how the funding mechanism actually happen, and what actually investors are looking from them. So, I think uh, when Nijar will talk, he will share this more detail because most of uh, uh, our uh, Young entrepreneurs, they don't know the uh, uh, the valuation of the valuation of their startup. They they don't even know how to make the valuation of their efforts and others. And that will always uh, make some uh, 
critical situation with the investor from local side and from on the other overseas side also. In the uh, the innovator and the entrepreneur, those who are actually looking for funding, somehow and sometimes miss the other things that is actually needed to make his uh, uh, innovation a growth model to have it sustainable and other things. Some people thought that the only getting fund is the final solution, but that is a part of the equation, not the all. So actually what we need is uh, uh, awareness building among the entrepreneurs and also uh, network like Bangladesh, Angel Networks, Angel Investor like Asif, they also need to prepare the uh, entrepreneur so that they can have a uh, similar talking to the angels, ventures, and others investors. So I think there, there is a, because of last two years, we, we saw a good numbers of uh, startup get funded. Uh, Bangladesh uh, government is also active in the funding region. They are Startup Bangladesh Limited. And there is a, a government project to uh, seed funded the young entrepreneur who have idea, good idea. So something is actually happening for the last two, three years. And we found that the people like Nijor, Rahat, they are actually connecting the uh, local entrepreneur with the uh, global investors. So all things are it's a positive buy. The next thing is to take it to the next level. We need uh, some of the important uh, intervention from the government side. One is how we can make the foreign investor life easy in Bangladesh so that they can easily invested in our startup. Number two is the how we can uh, prepare, how we can educate our uh, entrepreneurs so that they can have a good idea about what funding is, how to get it, and how to prepare them, prepare themselves for the funding. And third one is the total ecosystem because uh, the startup, we actually missed up in Bangladesh, we missed up a startup and SME, so it is important to uh, prepare them, to avert them, what actually is uh, high uh, startup area and what is the SME things extremely easy. So uh, all three things, if you can address all these three things, then I hope that this year will be better than last year's and we will go further on this way. So thank you very much. So I can, if I will be available, then I'll talk in the next one. Thank you, Asif. So thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for, for sharing your valuable thought on this. Uh, so uh, now I, I'd be I I I'd have the same question for Nidja Rahman Bhai. So uh, uh, can you can you share your thought on and also you uh, Bangladesh Angel is one of the leading angel in the country and you are doing a lot of activities. There are several uh, portfolio startup of yours getting funded. So how the other uh, ideators or innovators could uh, take inspiration or preparation for reaching you and getting funded? Sure, Ebong. Um, you know. Asalaikum Shabaike Abong, you know, want to say, uh, you know, thank you so much for having me, Asif Pai and, and the team. Also good to see uh, colleagues like Asif Rahman Bhai, who's also been part of us since the beginning. And, you know, we're really, uh, we exist thanks to the goodwill of the ecosystem. So always want to acknowledge that as well. Um, in terms of, you know, where Bangladesh Angel sits, so we've been operating since 2018, late 2018. So it's almost been about four years. Uh, we have done 36 investments so far, uh, close more than 50 crores or close to six million dollars USD in terms of aggregate investments. And in fact, you know, this year we've been the busiest ever. So the first six months we've done about 20 investments. So you know, almost one per week now. So the ecosystem is getting quite um, uh, active. You know, there's a lot of interest both from local investors, NRBs as well. There's a lot of members of band who are from outside of Bangladesh and also institutional investors, you know, VCs who are looking at the country. They want to know what kind of companies are coming up and, and they want to co-invest and maybe even do follow-on investments into companies in band's portfolio and obviously within the ecosystem itself. Um, I think the best advice I could give to uh, an entrepreneur is to go ahead and get started. I think a lot of entrepreneurs, I think they, they believe that, you know, funding is what they need to get started. I think sometimes, you know, as Munir Bhai said, you know, funding is not the end all be all. In fact, you know, it is the fuel that I think helps you to, and allows you to continue what you want to do. Right. And in fact, you know, you'll be in the best position when you have gone to the market, you have customers, you have paying customers, 
you have growing revenues and you have that, you know, you're in a position where, you know, you are not desperate for capital, right? That you have momentum and you can show that momentum. Investors obviously want get more excited and, and, and find funding you. And in fact, you have more leverage uh, vis-a-vis these investors because you are not in a position where you absolutely need their capital. So I think the best advice I can give is one, to get started. Go and go out and get customers. Go out and get users. Go out and get numbers. You know, data matters a lot. So I think I think that's that's for the first step. The second is I think you know uh, don't be shy, right? You know, reach out to me, reach out to people like Asif Pai, reach out to everybody you know in the ecosystem, and tell your story. You should have a very succinct, very simple story about why you're doing what you're doing. You should be able to talk about the particular opportunity, and you should be able to quantify that, right? When we talk about target markets, you no know, total adjustable markets and such, you should be able to quantify how large the market is, how large the opportunity is. You should be able to use examples from other countries of similar business models that have got done well. Uh, you should have package all that into obviously, you know, your own verbal presentation, which is very important because in Bangladesh, you know, even over Zoom, you know, people still want to hear from you, right? And obviously also over a pitch deck. Uh, so I think that's number two is, you know, work on your communication. I think I could also suggest is, you know, even if somebody says no the first time, or a lot of people might say, well, let's talk again, or, or let's, let's continue the conversation. You know, that doesn't mean a no, right? Uh, I think you have to be persistent. Uh, one thing I really like, uh, you know, certain entrepreneurs do is they, they make effort to keep in touch. They say, hey, you know, they have a newsletter, they have a monthly update that, hey, you know, this is what we've done. This is our tr- numbers. This is where we've grown. These are the offers we have for investment. Once again, you know, investors are very much driven by herd mentality or what we might call FOMO, fear of missing out, right? So if, we, if we're seeing that, oh, wow, this guy's doing really well. Like this, this company's doing quite well. The, the numbers look interesting. Okay, maybe the first meeting, maybe I wasn't so convinced, but maybe this meeting where I have to sit down and, and see what I can do, right? So that's number two is I think you have to work on your communications and your communication skills. Um, a third piece, I think, is, you know, in, in general, I think it's um, just, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, can do around just being professional and in, in how you come across, uh, you know, not, um, I think a lot of founders, they get into the habit of, you know, talking about the ecosystem and, and doing a lot of social media posts and everything. There is a strategic value to that, but there's also, I think, a, a devalue element of that as well. So I think, you know, keep your head down build a good team around you, go after the opportunity, you know, execute constantly, come up with those numbers and communicate that to the ecosystem, to people like me and, and to others in the market as well. Uh, I think all those things are useful. Um, I think Jisha might suggest as a practical advice is, you know, you look for one or two strategic kind of programs like accelerators, incubators, potentially where you could go through and, you know, they also help you a lot, right? So there's obviously ones like GP Accelerator, there's obviously um, Idea Project, because those are also become conduits by which, you know, angel investors like us, you know, look for deal flow. So when you have that kind of seal of approval, I think that's always useful as well. Um, so those are some of the ones I would say just kind of practical advice as far as if you're looking for angel invest- investments, have you talk more about, you know, what specific things like say valuations and others, but, but I think in the, in the beginning, you just have to get started. You have to go out in the market, go to customers and investors and, and build some momentum for yourself. Uh, so thank you. So thank you. Thank you, Nijo, for, for sharing such a, such a brief, uh, brief view uh, from an angel investor to the ideator or innovators. Uh, so I'm going, I'm moving to another Asif, Asif Raman Bhai, Asif Bhai. Uh, can, you, can you share your thought on this note? Uh, hi, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I actually, uh, I'm running my company for a very long time. I started uh, uh, investing uh, just to help few people that I really liked. And it was almost like 12 years ago when I started like investing a little bit uh, in US. Uh, I, then I came back in Bangladesh. I started investing a little bit also in Bangladesh starting from uh, 2012. So in past... Uh, uh, 10 years, uh, I have uh, in, in a lot of different business in a, from a lot of different sectors. Uh, at the beginning, it was just me uh, that uh, I was actually trying to use the, the founders that actually mattered the most in instead of the plan or everything else. Uh, in last one and a half year, uh, I actually invested about 10 businesses in Bangladesh. And he, in th- this time, I did not actually invest it alone. I always had a like, few group of my friends who are, we actually invested together. So it's kind of like uh, our uh, very close uh, network of angels. 
and uh, this is something like uh, that we are been looking for for very long. I'm also like a part of like uh, Bangladesh Angels too, and uh, like when we talk about like Angel Network, it's all about like having people uh, who uh, could really help. And uh, generally, it's not always about the money. It's not always about like uh, uh, that someone is actually coming only for investment. It also sometimes involves like if you could add some value, you. Uh, in investment terms, you really don't require to give more time to those startups. You don't require to sit in the board. Uh, sometimes, though, like uh, you might have a requirement in terms of like if the founder wants to sit on the board, because when you are in investing in pre-seed or seed, maybe they're not mature enough to run most of the things. They, they maybe require uh, some of the help. Like some uh, founders probably lack uh, accounting knowledge some founders probably lack like technical knowledge so if one of the angel investor brings in those on board like if one of them is like technical or if one of them has like accounting background he could give little uh, heads up and but generally should not expect that like uh, all of your investor will actually work as like full time or you could actually get their help all the time like uh, like they're running the show it should not be the case the founder is the one sh who should be actually running the case and uh, in bangladesh like if you ask me like uh, what are the main things uh, what we face uh, in terms of like the company raising fund or company actually struggling a lot is more to do with the educations with the background like what people expect from their business what people expect uh, in terms of the fundraising uh, most of the time people raise fund in wrong time when they need fund they do not raise the fund when they could raise the fund they do not raise the fund so uh, this is the kind of mistake we see all the time like uh, in some of the phase when your number is not right when your business model is not proven uh, then maybe you can't actually bring in any kind of investor you need someone who could actually rely on you give you space to grow and uh, let you pivot if you need to and when you are actually have a model when you could really grow scale up the, in that time is the best time to actually uh, bring in fund so people sometimes actually raise fund too early and uh, push more than into like a problem and when it's very hard to explain why some of the plan did not work because the plan was not ready they are just actually testing some of the things so uh, raising fund in right time and understanding the metrics like uh, sometimes uh, there are one things like uh, one particular metrics matter the most so people need to understand what's that core metrics of his business that he continuously needs to keep growing. So understanding those and making mistake on those portions will actually make the team struggle more. And they may be, uh, will actually run out of fund or like struggle more in terms of financing. Otherwise, like our ecosystem is in very nice phase. We see a lot of like foreign investor, a lot of like angel investor, a lot of like initiative and VCs are coming on board in Bangladesh. I do not think our ecosystem is very serious yet. We see all of those. Uh, I think all of those are actually we're trying some of ideas. Is most of those are not very, very, very serious business yet. So we need to give more time. We need to understand the long game, like what game we are actually getting into, and maybe with time, well, our uh, ecosystem, the founders, everything else will actually become much more uh, like practical, and we will actually grow more. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Asifai, for for sharing uh, from an angel investor's perspective. And uh, as as everyone knows, that I think uh, this is very exciting uh, time for all the startups and the invest. I mean, entrepreneurs uh, of our country. So they are getting funded. They are growing. And after the COVID nineteen, uh, I think there are a lot of new opportunities are coming for the startups. So on this note, on this note, I have I have found some question uh, before this program that. Uh, how to make access to finance uh, easy for the entrepreneurs? So this is the very common questions I'm getting from the for, for the from the entrepreneur. So on this note, I mean, uh, Major, why any any thought on this issue? So how this this can be done for the entrepreneurs to make it easier? Yeah, I think. Um... Well, it's generally very hard to get funded, anyways, right? Uh, I mean, that's just a rule of business. Yeah. Even if you look at um, a, a very mature ecosystem like the U.S., you know, less than two percent of companies in the U.S. who are created each year get venture funding, right? So this is not a—it's actually not a normal thing. 
to go out and go and get angel investors, to go out and get, you know, VC investors. And it's also not every business is built for that, to be honest, because, you know, to invest in such type of businesses, the return expectations aren't, you know, I'm going to get 20, 20, 10, 20% year over year. It's 5X, 10X my returns, right? Those are the expectations that these investors will have because, you know, investing in other entrepreneurs, uh, investing in new businesses is probably one of the most you know riskiest things that you can do with your money, right? So it's it's not going to be easy regardless of um, you know uh, what might be the impression. Uh, I think there's a few things that entrepreneurs can do uh, to put themselves in a position. So one is obviously they have to go out and and prove out their thesis, right? So every business in the beginning is an idea and it's in a hypothesis about what can work, you know, how you can change behavior, how you can bring solutions to a particular problem. But I think you have to go out and, and test that, right? You have to get, you know, pilots, you have to have proofs of concepts, you have to have minimum viable products. And people like Asifai are quite experts in that because they've done that over many, many, many different types of businesses and opportunities, right? So, you you, you know, one is I think actually go out and, and do what you're, you're trying to do, right? And, and to generate numbers accordingly. I think that's one. Second is, I think, you know, make sure that, you know, you have, um, as Asif Bhai also said, right, you have to have a certain level of, I think, um, understanding about, you know, how you kind of structure your business, right? So one is obviously making sure you're keeping proper financials. So whatever you say is your revenue or whatever you claim is your user and metrics, you know, you actually have data to back that up, right? You have, because you have, you have to prove that to whoever wants to invest in your company. Otherwise, they're not going to believe in what you're saying, right? So I think that's that's one, that's part of it. Another thing is obviously making sure that you are incorporated, making sure that you have proper documents. Um, even part of that is also, you know, you have to think about your cap table, right? So a lot of businesses, for example, in Bangladesh, you know, they have family members in their businesses. If you're trying to be a startup, you cannot do that, right? Um, if you're a lot of businesses in Bangladesh, for example, they have silent partners who take 30, 40% of the business, and then they're in the background, they're not working full time. They're not, you know, they're just, they're more like angel investors. You cannot do that if you're trying to be a startup, right? The, the, executive founders, the full-time founders, particularly the CEO, um, have to have the bulk of the shares, right? You have to have a, you know, professionalized cap table. And if, there, if anybody's looking for more information, I've done, you know, newsletters on that, right? So there's things you could do to kind of professionalize, um, you know, how you kind of come across the impression you're, you're giving. Another opportunity is obviously going through an accelerator program where they work with you on, on these types of things. Um, third is, I think, you know, just go out and look for mentors, right? And, and the best place to look for mentorship are one, people like Asifai who are experts both in entrepreneurship and obviously in angel investing. So they know what kind of businesses will get funded or are more likely to get funded than not, uh, what kind of businesses are worth investing in and, and what kind of businesses are worth building. That's one. You should also go out and reach out. You know, now we have a community of founders, you know, at least 40 to 50, if you look at the Light Castle dashboard of companies that have raised angel funding and some of them have raised VC funding. So go out and talk to them, go out and reach out to them. Most founders are very helpful. Even if they're very busy, they're willing to help other founders if you're willing to be persistent and if you're willing to be professional in how you reach out to them. Learn about how, Bhaya, can I, can you get us? Can you give me some feedback on my pitch deck? You know, can you give me some feedback on fund feedback on fundraising? I'm thinking about reaching out to this person. Can you give me an introduction? Right? These are things that most people are willing to help if you are, you know, if you ask for it and if you ask about it in a nice way. Right. So I think, you know, make sure you have enough mentorship as well. Right. So I think it's a combination of mentorship, it's a combination of being professional and, and it's a combination of persistence and it's a good and it's, you know and obviously the 90, 90, 95 to 99 percent of that is execution and how you tell the story around you know whatever you have executed so far um so i think those are some of the elements now we can have i mean this is another discussion about the other side right if you're trying to make it easier for entrepreneurs to get investment then you have to make it easier for investors to invest as well and and we have some bottlenecks in the country when it comes to that you know but that's a more policy issue around how people can for example in other countries you know angel investors can write off their losses on angel investments which is very attractive, right? Then, okay, at least I, I get to deduct some of my losses, right? That's that's interesting, right? In other countries, you have matching mechanisms for angel investors to invest in companies. We don't have that in Bangladesh, right? Um, in other countries, you have matching mechanisms by which VCs will invest in companies and the government will co-invest, like in Singapore. I think, you know, Enterprise Singapore is one mechanism, right? Though, um, in other in also what we don't have in Bangladesh is, we don't have mechanisms by which you know local and international investors are treated equally um, on onto a cap table, um, and therefore you know you have to decide: do I want to raise locally or do I want to raise internationally? At some point, you have to make that decision. Um, you know, if there was a way in which 
you know, we could have cap tables that, you know, where entrepreneurs can set up international entities, get money into those entities, get it back to Bangladesh, right? Those, I mean, we have to talk about those issues as well. I know this is the World Business Angels Forum, so we should talk about those issues. But um, I think, you know, there's, I think there's, it's both sides, you know, we have to make it easier for angel investors to invest and, or investors to invest. Second, you know, entrepreneurs have to take certain steps. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nirubai, for, for sharing that. You know, uh, you have told about mentorship is also very, very he helpful. And there are a lot, there are a bunch of, bunch of uh, founders, uh, you, you said about the light, light castle dashboard. I've seen that they're very helpful for all the, all the people who actually reach out to them. So that's, that's very important. So uh, again, I'm moving towards uh, Asip Rahman Bhai, Asip Bhai. So as you have invested uh, 10 startups recently, and I mean, so on your of point of view, so if anyone wants to go to you and talk about, uh, I mean, getting funded from your end, so how they should, uh, what, what are the things they should be considered about? Uh, in generally, as I say, like uh, I invest in business based on the founders, uh, the hustling mentality he has, based on the background experience he has, and if he is relevant to the business uh, at all, uh, but if you ask me the ideal scenario, like what I expect from a business before I consider them to be investable, is about they need to have very good legal structures in terms of like uh, if uh, the share is properly issued, if they have all the documents and everything ready. And also they need to have a like, clean book. They need to have like clean accounting uh, in terms of the, all the money, the, the way it, uh, uh, the money actually uh, came in and went. Uh, so those are the things that is very important to be even considered uh, to be investable in Bangladesh. I really do see a lot of business doesn't have the legal structures and uh, uh, paperwork and the accounting uh, is, is in order. So that is like something that is very problematic in terms of when we consider uh, to invest in this business. Other than that, like uh, when a founders, if, if the founder is very young, if it is the first time founders, is uh, expected to have unrealistic expectations or have few of the things that he doesn't have like practical experience maybe that is very okay and he's probably trying to reinvent wheels in few cases that's all okay if you ask me because that's how everyone is start but when i see like after uh, uh they, they after passing like after one or something uh, one year or something they are still like trying to do some very trivial things and making the same mistake of not having the legal structures not having a proper accounting process or not paying the tax and that and all the other things, then it makes me very worried about the business that how they are going to legally sustain or when I bring in more investor or when I give them like more money, how they are actually going to uh, like uh, legalize those and uh, go forward. So th that is like some kind of like a very basic problem that we always face. If those are the things in order, then maybe it, it will make the business more investable. Other than that, like uh, in Bangladesh, uh, though I'm a like tech investor, I'm a technical person. So in my first 10 years of my career, I invested mostly in like tech business. But in past one year, I invested in everything else less than tech. So I invested in like in e-commerce. I invested in like uh, child art and craft brand. I invested in a lot of like different things. So, but what I see in like any kind of business, uh, they always wanted to lean towards the tech and sometimes like over lean towards the tech. So uh, for, for, for a business that really doesn't have much to do with tech sometimes because most of the advice they could get or most of the like uh, accelerator, incubator, whatever they face, they all, they're more lean towards the tech uh, infrastructures. And we mostly see like tech mentors and those kind of people more. So everybody thinks like they need to have an app. Everybody thinks they need to have like a system, some kind of system, not, each and every business needs their custom system, not each and every business needs their custom app. Sometimes you could just get, get started with something like WordPress, get started with something like WooCommerce or Shopify, while you don't need to really build an website. You just could actually have one or two people who could actually get started with some themes or plugins, customize it for you. And probably you don't need to even spend one lakh taka to make a website, make an app. Uh, people sometimes overspend uh, for not understanding this thing or maybe not becoming tech savvy in their own. So uh, like over technology is not good. Over engineering is never good. Maybe that's not the right time. And a uh, few other aspects I have seen, like people when they do not uh, look at things uh, in very practical way, uh, to be very, uh, very frank, uh, 
like 10 out of 10 business i have seen in bangladesh where they have their like uh, the low expected uh, like uh, uh, like a scenario or expectation from their business what kind of number they want to reach it probably never actually uh, they will probably never be able to reach that number almost like uh, 10 out of 10 times so th- that is like something that i want to actually see improve with times the founder when the find- founder become like more practical when they have like more good mentors when they are more focused and like they are really doing business more they probably they will uh, have like better projections then they will probably have like more practical projections in terms of like what they want to reach like when someone uh, is, is struggling to raise the follow up fund like uh, they raise like pc but uh, struggling a lot in seed or they raise like series a but can't uh, raise like series b is mo- all most of the time is all about the growth is all about the numbers they are trying to reach and the tractions they have got so if you have an unrealistic number in mind if you peak uh, in some numbers and growth that you are not able to reach then you are going to very hard time in the follow up funding so that's very important because one round of fi- finance probably not going to get, get your business very long so you need to be very careful about how much money you raise what kind of promise you make and what kind of people you are bringing in if those people doesn't understand the real scenario of your business if you are not able to reach those numbers you are going to have a very hard time so those are the few of the things people need to keep in mind uh, b- because I-, i do not want to see a business that depends everything up. on the business on fundraising so fund should be just a cash flow management is just that you should not actually like uh, push much more energy towards the fundraising you should run the business you should actually do the business make it like uh, positive in unit economics if you are not doing that if you are just uh, like relying on fundraising if you are uh, i i have seen few of the founders in dhaka who says like a ceo's first job if founder's first job is to know like how to raise fund i would say like if it's maybe like just 20% of his job or like even less than that sometime for some business if it's like a, like a sharing economy or something where the fundraising is very important because you are struggling or you are like competing with someone very big maybe the fundraising is important but if you are not able to use that fund if you are not able to uh, bring traction up your business if you are not able to really do the business none of those fund will help you would actually think doesn't matter how much fund you have that's it So thank you so much. Thank you so much for for such a very specific way you have uh, shared the thought. And uh, I'm I'm very close to that. I mean, end of this panel. So I go back to Nijar Bhai again. So uh, Nijar Bhai. So uh, I mean, I'm coming back from investment now. I I am I'm asking you about, about your advice to the young people. I mean, the youth of the country to becoming an entrepreneur. What is your advice uh, for them? don't do it <laughs> no i'm just kidding just kidding i think um i think we you know i think there's a certain kind of um glamour to entrepreneurship that you know if you get into the day to day of being a ceo which uh, asif bhai also talked about right in many ways um i don't know if i could say it that in this forum you know somebody asked me you know i was with my team and somebody met my team and they asked me okay what do you do? they asked them what do you do i'm an analyst at bangladesh angels and they came to me and what do you do i said well i have to eat everyone's shit right like that's that's kind of the job of the ceo right you're dealing with all the problems you know of your customers right they're going to come to you with and you have to solve it you got to deal with the problems both at work and personal of your employees you got to deal with the problems of your investors if you have investors you got to deal with the problems of government if they decide to knock on your doors you got to deal with the problems of your vendors if they cannot deliver if they cannot you know if they need money and you have to you know if you, if they need a certain structure on their contract etc you have to deal with the problems of everybody and so you know i think you know that's something i would advise people to think about is if that's what you really want to do if you enjoy solving problems and if you are if you can handle the stress and it's a uh, it's 24 hours a day 7 days a week you know i i am i'm sure asif is very similar because we whatsapp sometimes right you know you're going from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. if you you know if you're lucky maybe even longer and you're probably doing that 7 days a week it's it's never ending but it's also fun right it's also fun but the fun really comes when you have certain victories 
right? You, the fun comes when, you know, you see your team members mature. The fun comes when you look back and say, oh, I've been on a journey of four years and guess where we've come and, and the relationships have been, we've been able to build and, and, you know, how we've been able to change the landscape, the ecosystem, whatever, how, you know, came out. So I think that's the, the first piece of advice is just understand what you're getting into. The, the second piece of advice is, I, I think this is also something asked if I said, right? A business, startup, SME, whatever that is, at the end of the day, you have to solve a problem for somebody, right? You have to solve problems for people. You have to add value to their lives because if you do add value, then you then there's no problem in you then asking for a part of that value back, right? That's the whole concept of the philosophy behind business. If you're just simply building things just for the sake of building things, if you're, if you're constantly worried about money, you know, this button needs to change on my app or, you know, if I have this product or if I have this new th- item or something, you know, that's, that's not what it's about. It's about, you know, adding value in the lives of the people you have chosen to help who are your customers, right? And so if you're doing that, then you're in good shape or you're, you're probably doing better than most of the, you know, entrepreneurs out there. But the, I think that has to be at the core. Is this business and am I adding value to my customers, right? I think that's that's probably number two. Um, and I think you know, if you do, if you focus on those things, everything else kind of falls in pl- into place over a period of time. But I, I think that's just something I would just consistently, you know, people, you know, I, I also had those, you know, uh, glamorous notions of being a CEO, and then you realize, you know, what it takes, and you know, I think it's not for everybody. Uh, you know, and and I think it's also you know you're not going to be ready for it on day one. You're going to learn to deal with it over time. So, but just be ready for that. There's, there's going to be a lot of setbacks. It's not fun <laughs> raising money, creating a business. It's actually not fun on a day to day, minute by minute basis. It's only really kind of fun. The most fun. I mean, maybe ask if I would disagree with you. The most fun kind of comes when you're looking back and you're seeing what you built. At least that's yes. what's been my experience. Absolutely. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nidhi, for sharing that. And lastly, uh, Asif Bhai, on the same note, any advice for the young uh, youth to become an entrepreneur? Uh, yeah, as it always says, like uh, business is hard. Business is very, very, very hard. Uh, uh, it's not for everybody. And especially in Bangladesh, the kind of like ecosystem ha- we have, the kind of like economy we have, uh, it, there could be like problems from each and every side. So people need to have the system in People need to have the hustling mentality that, that's why i said like i always look for the hustling mentality in a founders and if i have to advise i would uh, i would say like before you could find your product market fit before you could actually uh, really go into like at least some kind of break even be very careful about each and every uh, penny you spend uh, it doesn't matter if it's your money if it doesn't matter like if it's uh, investor money uh, before finding your, the perfect product market fit be very 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 careful if uh, in, in many other ways, running a business, the end of the day is all about the cash flow. It's all about like how you are actually managing money. So be very careful uh, unless you are uh, really positive in, in that note. And uh, it's true uh, that in Bangladeshi ecosystem, right now we have like so many uh, ecosystem enabler in terms of the uh, Accelerator, uh, incubator, also the Angel Network. Uh, uh, Bangladesh Angels is now right doing very, very, very well. The network is now close to like 500 people, so they could really help almost any business that has potential. But at the same time, you should be very aware about where you get your advice and what kind of uh, experience that person actually particularly have, be- because like a wrong advice uh, onto some of the things because. Uh, we, uh, I have seen like in our ecosystem, there are investors, there are like people who thinks uh, like each and every business is uh, just an opportunity to grow very big or not, not grow at all. I do not see business in that way. Like not every business needs to be an unicorn. Not every business needs to be like invest, uh, investment focus that you always need to raise money. You could also have business who, who would never probably become an unicorn, but could still still be very profitable could it still be very much afloat so uh, be very careful about like where you get the advice and how you are actually planning for it and uh, it's true for most of the founders uh, the business is his baby but be very careful about like uh, how much you are attached to your business and what kind of uh, like attachment you are actually growing into uh, because uh, like uh, your business uh, well-being welfare and your uh, personal well-being should not actually always uh, live into like each other. Uh, Sometimes for founders, I have seen founders who are actually trying, uh, struggling with his business for more than five years. 
it actually kind of like uh, like keeps a lot of like uh, bad uh, issues on his mental health and a lot of other things you need to be very careful about your mental health like if you are a very bright person who graduated from an university uh, very well and you are struggling with your business you need to also understand when to stop you need to understand when to actually let it go uh, because Uh, business is not for everybody and uh, i'm not asking people to like be uh, you need to fail but uh, the thing is like not every business will grow that, that's the fact that's the number so as a founder you really need to know like when to stop when to say like uh, i'm done so hustling is one thing that is the must for founders but hustling for a wrong thing uh, hustling for too long will have a like very negative impact on your health and on on your family so i would expect the founders to be uh, more practical to be more uh, researched when the, they are getting into business and always reach out to the uh, mentors and the uh, like ecosystem enablers they would be able to help thank you so thank you so much so i think uh, the the participants the startups who will be Uh, listening to this uh, i mean uh, session they they could have uh, a great ideas on as an angel investor both of, both of you uh, from your end how they should uh, 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 they should think of to to go to you and get getting i mean uh, getting something positive vibe so so on the, this note i'm i'm concluding this panel discussion i'd like to thanks our esteemed pa- panelists asip roman bhai nijar roman and also Munir Hasan sir, who actually left soon. So, uh, thank you so much for joining us, sharing your valuable thoughts, and also, I mean, giving your valuable time with us and with the participants. Uh, 